next order of business will be to adjourn the meeting of um, May 25th. I was considering this part of the select board now. I think. So, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting of May 25th? Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So that meeting is adjourned. We have a decision. We have written the decision, and we will be posting that on the town website tomorrow for everybody to see. And um, I believe the people, the two people involved, have already received courtesy copies. But we'll be sending them official copies tomorrow. Okay. Um, now minutes of May twenty second. Any changes? Okay, motion to move to uh, accept. Did you get that, Rose? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, the minutes of May 25th, which was the right of way hearing. Oh, no, that's not finally. We've got three sets of minutes. Uh, can't we just do them all in one motion? Does anybody have any changes on either of those? Okay, motion to accept the other two. No. Okay, second. So it's the 22nd, the 25th, and... And the 22nd, the 25th, because we did two hearings on the 25th. We did the, um, the right-of-way hearing and then the dog hearing. Right. Okay. Board orders are coming around. Oh, they're in front of me. Let me pass them this way. Um, fire truck. Let's see, Barbara, that's right in front of me. You guys have all seen this. Um, this is, we authorized a bank loan for the East Montpelier fire truck. Um, now we actually have to authorize somebody to sign the contract. Would somebody please make a motion? to authorize, I guess we all have to sign it, to authorize us to sign this uh, loan document, which I will pass around. Uh, so moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Barbara, it looks like there's two pages to sign yeah. there. Yep, there's, there, I, actually, I think there's like three little sticky notes on there. Oh, you have to sign oh, different put these nice little sticky notes on. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're on there. <laughs> no, they have nice little flowers. Okay, I'm going to pass this around for signature. Uh, next one's the Kent Hill Scoping Project, um, the one that we signed last month. Uh, they found a couple of typos. She had written what those were. They were just pretty minor. They date changes and a couple of other things. So everybody okay with my signing the new one? That would just be me, apparently. Yes. Okay. And today, what's the date today? 12. June 12. Oh, yeah, I should know that. Well. No, this one doesn't need all of us, so this is just for Barbara. Um, the MERP grant, which Scott so wonderfully prepared for us. We have it right here, and this needs... How many signatures does this one need? Just yours. Okay, will somebody authorize me to sign this, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. You? Pass that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you guys have to sign this one. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Scott. So, Scott, I need to scan it at the town office to send it to you. Okay, next one is the Lightning Ridge Road paving uh, project, which was completed last year. They've now sent us the grant reimbursement form. And this one, we all have to sign in order to let them send us the money. Can I have a motion on that one? Go ahead. There was a, 
amendment piece to that where they had uh, paid paid the forty thousand of the initial grant and then it went over budget so it was amended to okay, that's right thank you for okay. explaining that that's okay what this is did somebody move to sign this no not yet so moved thank you second all in favor Aye. okay that one's done the WEC Collar Hill application, um, you all had that in your packets. Barbara gets this. Um, the, uh, the road crew, have, has the road crew looked at that? Yes. And what do they say about it? Okay. Yeah, oh, fine. It's good as presented. Uh, and Neil has also looked at it and he said, I guess you all saw this, he said that um, they're going to be cutting some ash trees, which is fine with him because we're cutting ash trees anyway because they're all going to explode well, all over the ro roads. Actually, I, I think he said that there, there weren't likely any that needed to be cut down, but he encouraged them while they were um, trimming some of the other trees to also take care of the ash uh, trees. So is that what he says? He says yeah. the only he said the before only... the beetles kill them. Yeah, yeah so, so they're not diseased yet, but being preempted. Seems like it's going to be an extracurricular for WEC. So I oh, want to make sure I misunderstood it. I thought he was saying they would be cut. Okay, so then we should add to the application that we'd like them to cut the um, ash trees. Yeah. Okay. With that change, let me just see here. Does anyone, is anybody familiar with that application? I was having an hard time understanding whether or not they were like relocating. I saw where they were identifying where the new hole was going to go. Were they going to move the, the distribution lines and follow that? I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't understand it either. Anybody? Okay. What would you like to do? Uh, it was more of a curiosity. It, it's, yeah. It'd be great if they were putting in a new pole and relocating new distribution if they weren't going to also have another power mm -hmm. distribution line that was mm -hmm. several hundred feet away from it um, if it were needed. But, but that wasn't entirely clear on the application. It'd be nice, I guess, if we can give them some feedback to offer a little bit more clear, clarity around like the scope of work. Yeah, like is it for a new house? What's that? Is it for a new house? Yeah. They mentioned one a, adjacent property owner, but it didn't say whether or not it was being put into service service them in particular. Do you know that, John? No, you know, we basically understood that whatever the Washington Library Company wants to do, they're going to do it. <laughs> and actually, the courtesy of them even hands us, it's okay. To a certain extent, but and we can... Uh, the they're just going to put Yes, but if we ask them not to remove a certain tree or to deal with certain things, they'll generally do that. So that's kind of why we're looking at it. Yeah, and I mean, it, sometimes distribution upgrades trigger Act 250. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen with distribution upgrades. So I don't, I don't think it's just a courtesy. I don't know. It seems like a good thing to inform us about. Mm -hmm. um, Barbara, I don't see a place here to add those conditions or requests. That's the form that they provide for us. So what? Oh we wait, I, I'm sorry. I do see it at the bottom. Okay. So we're going to subject to the following special conditions, which is please remove ash trees. I think that's the only one. Yeah. Okay. What ash. happens to does somebody come get firewood when they chop down a big tree? They belong to the landowner, uh, and if the landowner doesn't want them, then they can take it. But generally, uh, on our land, they just leave them lying. And if we get them, we can't. We do, and if we don't, they rot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, just filling this in. Uh, the George Leonard Road one, right? 
No, no this is Collar Hill. Hill. We're putting the George Leonard Road one aside for now. Because okay, that has other conditions. Because that has other conditions, and um, I've talked to Lewis Porter about that one. Um, because we're concerned that it has to do with the whole class four road. And he said that they could wait until next, uh, our next meeting to, for us to deal with that one. Dean? Um, yes. On the top of that application from Washington Electric or whatever, it says mm -hmm. town of Brookfield. <laughs> so it does. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, good, good catch, Rose. I'll sign this later. Um, so Barbara, remind me to please to sign this later. Okay, that comes to the end of that okay. section. Next, we're going to consider appointing Cole Bliss, who is not here, but we've worked with him, so we told him he didn't have to come. Would somebody like to move to appoint Cole Bliss as our constable? and our animal control officer contingent upon his finishing his training for the two jobs. So moved. I didn't know about the constable part. Is, that, is, a, is an animal control officer always a constable? No, the constable is the person generally in the town. The only thing the constable does is serve orders on people. Okay. They don't have the authority to you know, do anything, do the kinds of things that a normal police officer kind of person would do. Because, although we could, we could require that they get the training, which would be months. And then we would have a police officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just didn't know. But we just use, use them for that. But in the past, we usually the same person has served both. All right, we have a motion. Did we get a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. We also have an applicant for the Conservation Commission. Is Larry here? No. Okay. Oh, Paul is here. It's Paul. Oh, right here. Yes. Oh, hi. Good evening. And you'd like to be on the Conservation Commission? I would. I uh, have been following the, uh, the appeals for new members and finally just reached the point where I thought, well, okay. Uh, I went to their meeting last Wednesday night. Uh, it seemed like a great group of folks, and I'm really interested in a number of the issues that the, the Commission's taking up. Um, invasive species, and uh, perhaps even uh, looking at the potential for a community land trust. Mm -hmm. And I'll add that we got an email from Larry Bush, who's the new Conservation Commission chair, and he sent it along a resounding unanimous agreement to have uh, all join the commission. Any questions for Paul? Yeah. In um, Larry, Larry's uh, email, he had mentioned that your previous work experience was relative to the commission. Was there, did you serve in other organizations that, that did conservation work? Yes. Um, in addition to a, a lifelong amateur naturalist, um, hunter, fisherman, shirt maker, lots of time out in the woods. Uh, I graduated with a BS in biology and went to work for the state of Vermont in uh, uh, aquatic biology. Um, sort of morphed into um, wastewater treatment biology, spent 35 years assisting communities with uh, treatment plant problems, issues in biological treatment. Um, have done stream surveys, um, have done uh, um, uh, well, pick bugs um, for, for DEC, that's where you, uh, you know, do a stream survey, a stream sample, and then sit down and, and um, identify them down the genus and sometimes species. So familiar with uh, aquatic biology. And are, would you say that there are like, uh, in particular uh, conservation needs that the that Cal's community needs in particular that you see are being underserved that you focus on? Uh, what I'd really like to get involved with is the push that the uh, commission is now taking up on invasive species. Inventory um, and addressing, you know, choosing a couple of species to really focus on for the, the present time and uh, trying to organize a community effort to uh, address the invasives, attack them um, if we can. 
Uh, the other the other issue that I'm interested in is is a community land trust. Um, but I've learned that the Vermont Land Trust is no longer interested in smaller parcels. Um, I had talked to them about oh, a dozen years ago um, about conserving my property, but at that time they were not interested in parcels smaller than 50 acres, but were willing to talk to me if I could combine with a neighbor to bring up a, a parcel the size of 50 acres. Now. Um, no, we had looked at several neighbors putting together parcels and approaching 200 <coughs> acres, and they weren't interested um, because of the, the amount of work that it takes for the land trust to um, oversee and maintain the, the conservation easements. Um, so, thinking that the conservation of, of parcels 200 acres and larger is, is very important. It's going to be a way to get us toward that 30 by 30 and, I don't know, about 50 by 50. But in addition to large parcels, I think that it's important to preserve some smaller working forest parcels. And that's where I think a community land trust might be able to, to come in and benefit the town. Okay, one more question. Um, did we, before this uh, board uh, came into, I guess was uh, was installed, you had emailed each one of us uh, about another issue that you were really passionate about, which is affordable housing. Yes. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are around uh, the uh, sometimes competing um, interests of wanting to keep parcels and property uh, affordable and, and developable um, and, uh, and, and the goals of conservation as well. Yes, and, and I agree. Uh, I wrote that, that I see a real need for affordable housing and said uh, something about my son, um, Andrew is now uh, renting over in East Cowes, but he and Rachel looked for months, and when they finally found this place, that first day, Chip Tremper had received 35 contacts about that particular apartment. Uh, we, we definitely need to have affordable housing, and um, how, to, how to balance the need for conservation in our forested and, and uh, wetland areas with being able to put in um, small developments that will increase the numbers of houses in that, you know, 150, $200,000 range that might be affordable by a young couple these days. Um, that's that's going to be difficult to do. Um, and I think I had mentioned in that email that I was wondering if there was some way to incentivize um, property owners that are in um, areas that would be appropriate for development of affordable housing um, and, and by the same token incentivize uh, the, the conservation of wooded parcels that are contributing to a working landscape. <laughs> Dare I say it? That's for that's something the planning commission could look into. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be working on the town plan next, so maybe you can be thinking about that. I'm not sure you will. Yeah. Thank you. We're lucky to have you. So let's. Is there a motion? No. To, pardon me. I mean no. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a four-year term that expires in 2026. Thank you. Um, generator for the town hall. Nick, you're on. Hello, I'm going to come. Uh, the two proposals, contracts, 
at, from Brookfield Service for the generator here at the town hall and a generator at the McCormick Community Center, uh, which I think you have reviewed uh, last time I was here. I don't know if you have a copy. I brought a copy if you don't. Um, I'm here to seek uh, your formal vote of approval and signature and a check for $8,000 if you got it. So that's this thing you put in front of me, it looks like somebody else needs to sign. It's just a check. If you have the document that you want us to sign, is that right? It looks like the same document. But it looks like it's supposed to be filled out by... <clears throat> There's one for the town hall and one for the Maple Corner community. Two, two are two separate contracts. Okay. It's highlighted on the front page, which is town hall and which is community center. Oh, okay. And that's the same thing that you have. Okay. Okay, so, yes. So, yep. This, this one is for the town yep. hall and that one's for the I community see it. center. Six. Okay, that's a signature. So what you want is customer's name, and who's the customer? Uh, the town of Callis. Town of Callis. Okay. And you've all, we've had this in our packet, right? You've all had a chance and just, to it. Just to, uh, what you already know is that the contractor is asking for a deposit of $4,000 for each of the two projects. Uh, so as soon as um, that is available, and we, I have a signed contract, I will send that off to Brookfield Service. Okay. And then uh, the Department of Public Safety will receive a financial report form from me to reimburse 50% of that deposit expense. Are they propane? Pardon? Are they propane? Uh, they, yes, they will. They are propane. Yeah. It's going to use the, the existing tank for that. Question. And these are to come from ARPA funds, is that right? Yes. Okay. I, that was what the yeah. previous select board had agreed to. Uh, they thought. Okay. So what you need is one signature and somebody to fill out the rest of this, I think. If you, if you like, I can uh, fill in the, the line that says who, who the owner is. Yeah. If, the customer's name. Uh, there are some other decisions about... Um, additional services, do we want an extended service contract and so on, but uh, I think that we'll talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. Questions for Nick? There usually are maintenance contracts with the generators. Do you, this prior select boards have had to decide, do you want it twice a year or once a year mm -hmm. to come and service the generators? And I think that when we get, they're going to do the work uh, in late July or maybe early August. And so when we get closer to that date, and that's when they want the rest of the money, uh, we, can, we have a little time to talk about those details. Uh, the contract does, this, the one that we're agreeing to, it does include, um, let's see, I guess it's um, five-year parts, two-year service warranty, and so forth. So there are some baseline uh, services included. But those are, that's not maintenance contract. Right, it's not maintenance contract. Maintenance, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be, I'll be coming back to ask you questions about what we want to add on to the... Yeah, I just wanted the select board to know that it's ongoing maintenance. And, yeah, and how often do, is it recommended? Either once or twice a year. And, and you'll tell us what you recommend when the time comes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can look at the one at the town office or the school and see what their contracts are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Scott had, Scott had a question. <laughs> I, that just made me think of what the relationship between the like ownership of the generator at the community center, community center responsibilities versus town responsibilities in maintenance. Well, the Town will own the generator, community center, um, but that, that's a discussion. Who should be paying for the maintenance? Um, it might be the community center, so we'll, we'll have to talk about that. Okay. Uh. Does it include uh, all the wiring and switches to connect it up? It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, Good. Yes. Good. And, a, and a snow stand to get it a few feet uh -huh. up off the ground. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Are complicated. Are we ready, folks? Can we sign this? Not the check, we sign this, right? Yes, okay. sign this. Um, and let's see, I guess I was, I've been talking with Gabriel about and Sandra about having, uh, who, Sandra's been working on getting uh, the deposit 
prepared and, and ready. So I don't know what the next step is there. It, um, do I go back to Sandra and say, OK, I'm ready for the, for the check? Uh, she hasn't said that was just one of the invoice. Oh, uh, she just she wants an invoice. She received the invoice. OK. Uh, and she said that it's all good to go. But I'm not sure what that means. I think we signed off on it in these four. Oh, you did? Um, yeah. So I something for Brookfield in there, so I think. OK. Um, so we, we, just, uh, we Barbara should probably uh, inform Sandra tomorrow that it's all signed and okay. done, if you yeah, would, Barbara. Okay. OK. So I need a motion to authorize. Uh, again, it looks like one, so me, to sign. So moved. Uh, OK, so it is signing for the Maple Corner generator and the Callis Town Hall generator. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 OK. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> um, Lefebvre curb cut. That's been in your package. Um, road crews happy with it? As you gave them two options. Oh, right. Would you explain I'm that? I'm not sure what you decided on, but those are more. And we went by the road standards and found out that nobody has that kind of sight distance. <laughs> yeah, we did shoot that kind of what? Sight Option distance. number one. What does that mean? It's a sight distance. Sure. It, the question is, what's a sight distance? Yeah. Did you get an answer? It's got to be from three foot above the hot the roadway at the end of his driveway, looking both ways. Keep the height of three foot. He's supposed to be able to see 285 feet at 25 miles per hour. And it ain't happening in counts. It doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but he's amenable with the wedding thing, Mark, though, if you want to mark both yeah. options. Um, it's the one option we compromised because he's putting his, he's already got a plan for a septic system in that one option. So he's going to clear some trees, and that'll give them the best visibility we can get. So what exactly are we putting on restrictions and conditions then? That he was going to clear those trees that we haven't marked off of them. Okay, clear trees as marked to by? To improve the site distance. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just say as marked by road crew. He saw it. Yeah, but we just need to write it in here, <laughs> so I just want to get it right. Um, and Neil said it was, no, this was not a Neil issue. Okay, so any other questions for John? Was, is it an accessory building unit, or is, is that a new, he, on his, he's going to subdivide it. He's going to subdivide it. Okay. Everybody happy? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve this and sign it. So moved. Second. Second. Jamie seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Did you vote in? I did. Okay. Together. How are we doing? Barbara has a. Oh, sorry, Barbara. Yes. That's okay. I'm just wondering. You skipped the swim committee appointments. Oh my and, goodness! Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. And I don't know if you want to talk about the Curtis Pond Dock. They're not here to talk about it, but if you want to talk yeah, about I'll it, it's on the agenda. I'll explain that. Yeah. So um, we we have no swim committee at the moment, and these three people that are listed: Daniel Peeney, Pam Kentish, and Adrian Wade, have volunteered to do it. Um, so they would be appointed for one-year terms, okay? Um, and they're not here, <laughs> but they've done it in the past. So would you guys be okay with reappointing them, essentially? As long as they know it's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They do. Okay. I'll take a motion to reappoint them. So moved. Jamie moves. Second. Jordan seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, one of the things that precipitated this is that the old raft that's out in Curtis Pond has been, um, it's sort of falling apart. It's, they feel it's no longer safe. So Mark has been um, costing out, Mark is our harbor master. Did you know we had a harbor master? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I guess he got a hat with the job, is that right? <laughs> um, so it, Mark's been costing them out, and he's got some specs. The concern is, um, th th what he wants is for to use some of their budget to pay for it. And since they manage their budget, 
I don't think we need to weigh in on that, and they plan to fundraise for the rest. But the concern is that we will be the ones putting the raft out, so we are going to be liable. So we, Barbara, I believe, called Passif, our insurance company, and asked them to look it over and decide whether or not the specs that Mark sent, or to tell us, whether they would cover us for that. And have they responded? No, so Mark did send the specs to Larry Smith, who is our um, Passif representative here in Dallas, and that went on Friday, and of course Larry had an out-of-office message that he'd be out of the office on Monday, back on Tuesday. So we haven't heard back from Passive, but what we thought was, if, since you guys are here together, if you could, if you'd like to approve the purchase and installation of the dock dependent on the Passive saying yes, and it meets their insurance specifications. So was it previously insured? I can't speak to that. My guess is it was, because when we talked to Sandra about the dock, she's the one who made it real clear that the town would hold liability and we would it would need to be insured by passive. So my guess is it was, but I haven't been involved in the past. I'm not sure. Maybe John knows. Maybe Rose knows. <laughs> I mean, everything is insured. I don't think it came up. Everything's insured, right? It's a town facility, but it's good yeah. to check in. Things are shifting. You know. I suspect it, the previous one was insured, but whether it was or wasn't, this one needs to be. Donna? Uh, two things. One is when, the, when Passive figured out that we had a swimming area, I was the one that met with them. So they were over there and saw everything, and we had a raft then. Right. Um, but secondarily, there's a Curtis Pond uh, Reserve Fund. Have, have they decided not to use that? They do not want to dip into the Reserve Fund okay. for this. Yeah. They have a sort of a GoFundMe style campaign built and ready to launch as soon as we give the thumbs up. Am I misremembering that if they come short of that, <clears throat> that they mentioned that they were hoping to dip into that, and that's kind of why it was coming to us? But They have uh, some money in the budget. And I think uh, they want to use some of, like, 2,500 is my memory. Does that sound yeah. right? Of that, which they have. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so um, as Barbara said. <laughs> do, we, do we need to approve them if they need it? To, to use some of the reserve fund if they decide to do that? Oh, well, they're not asking for that. So, no, I don't think we do at this point. Okay. They'll have to come back to us if they want to do that. Okay. What we do need to do is just make sure the raft is um, safe. Sure. Rose, did you get the motion as um, far? Yeah, the, the okay. way it was on the agenda. Um, so we just need a motion to approve the purchase and installation of the new dock for Curtis Pond Swim Area oh. contingent on final passive insurance. It's a route. Route. Not a dock, right? Well, that says dock. Oh, I mean, dear. That, that's my... They've been using the terms dock, float, raft, okay. interchangeably. But okay. we should change it to raft. This is raft, raft. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay, would somebody like to move that? So moved. Okay, mm -hmm. second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Barbara. Would you let me or us know as soon as you hear I'm in close contact with some of the folks who are eager to hear? I'm in close contact with some yeah, of the folks who are eager to hear. Say as we hear from Larry Smith, yeah. probably tomorrow. Yeah, you bet. You sort of have contact with the outside world, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hazard of the job. Yeah. <laughs> Which job? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Barbara, did I miss anything else? Are no. we now no. on our finance advisory committee? <laughs> okay, Charlotte sent us a couple of documents. Have you all had a chance to look them over? I, I saw one document. Were there multiple documents? Two. What was the other one? One was uh, finance committee and yeah. one was budget process. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did and see both was, you know. I did. Under two I read it all, all 25 awesome. documents. That was doing last So, uh, do you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah, please. 
uh, when we were talking about um, who was running for select board, Anne very cheerfully said, I don't understand a thing about finance. So, you had to tell us it in public. Yes. <laughs> but what she's been doing, which I think is fabulous, is um, delegating among select board members and even to um, outside the select board for expertise. And I think that's a terrific way of doing it. The more the select board can appropriately delegate, the more manageable the job is. So um, hooray for you. For, for having that point of view. Um, and so uh, you may remember also that at an, an earlier select board meeting, I offered uh, to um, be, to start a finance committee. And uh, the question was, well, what would a finance committee do? And so the, the, this, uh, the, um, hand at the document that says finance committee, uh, tries to answer that question. And um, it needn't be an actual committee. Uh, Donna, I think, reminded me that if we're fewer than three people, we don't have to have all those rules about open meeting and you know all of those things. And it would be a very ad hoc uh, kind of group, only if there's a need. So, um, uh, uh, here are some possible topics. Um, and so uh, I, I would just um, ask you what questions occurred to you as you were, as you were reading through this. Anybody? Um, I think for me, when I was looking at the budget process proposal and both, but I mean, for me, a really key topic is what our future staffing looks like. You know, our professional ongoing yes. staff to provide continuity to future yes. select boards. And um, so I think um, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I just wondered if that was kind of built in enough to that kind of budget process proposal. It is built into the finance committee proposal, yeah. um, and there are other groups of people yeah. working on those kinds right. of staffing questions um, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But one of the key things is once you decide what your staffing is, you do need a plan for how you are going to set um, compensation. So you need a metric, and then you need to track it and make sure that you're keeping up, because otherwise you will get behind and you'll lose people. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the finance piece of that, it, it, um, Donna did a very thorough job description but not at all about the compensation piece, and that's one of your important pieces. Let's go. I think Donna wants to chime in. Yeah, um, so it, it seems, I'm looking at the finance committee piece here, mm -hmm. and it seems like each one could be a conversation. Um, and as far as, the, as far as compensation, I have done some research on that, and oh, I have great. access now to um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns mm -hmm. website. Ann gave them permission to talk to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then also East Montpelier has offered to loan us the compensation study that the League does. Um, I, don't, I don't think we, per we participated in that, so we don't get a free copy, but I can go to the town administrator and she'll let me look at their copy. <laughs> um, so I think that's a whole other sort of project is when we decide what our personnel is going to be in the office, you know, what, what's the compensation going to be? And I don't think it's something we're going to figure out tonight. Um, <laughs> but it is an important piece of it, for sure. Well, maybe we'll and you, may be, you may be able to make some recommendations, for sure. I just think this is a lot to cover tonight. I mean, no, no we, we were just trying to get some examples yeah, of, of yeah. how we would interact with this committee. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we were trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. 
So, other questions? Um, so, um, <clears throat> one of the things I was noticing when I put down these questions was, did I know any of the answers to all these things? <laughs> And um, in fact, I didn't know that the uh, highway budget was bigger than the select board budget until I mm -hmm. um, looked and found that out. And I, I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And I, uh, I'm not sure that we've had a really um, thoughtful uh, approach to purchasing um, all those really expensive pieces. Um, also, um, the <coughs> debt that the um, town has, the, our biggest um, debt over time is um, the East Montpelier Fire Station. And many of us know that that was a very um, <coughs> fancy, fancy project. And Woodbury's going to ask us for the same thing in terms of contribution. You said we don't have somebody currently on that building committee. Yes, I know, we do not. <coughs> but considering how much we're paying for East Montpelier, um, that, that is our, you know, one of our biggest, um, that is our biggest debt, because a lot of the other debt is being paid <coughs> off. Um, we definitely need somebody on that committee to make sure that Woodbury is not planning the same level of uh, generosity in what they want to build. <laughs> um, East Montpelier has every bell, bell and whistle they could think of and more. Um, the one thing that is cheerful uh, about the Woodbury I, uh, new fire project is they're starting to clear the spot for it, and it's not a very big spot. <laughs> so that's, that's good news. But um, uh, so that um, is, is uh, a piece of advice I'm <coughs> offering. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, John, do you know who was on the committee before? We, 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 uh, for Woodbury? Yeah. I, I, just, I assume uh, that's why you had your hand raised. Well, no, I just wanted to comment on oh. statements made about the East Montpelier Fire Station. A little bit. Uh, I, do we want to get into that tonight? Well, or well, we I just want you to understand that there was a vote, at least two votes. Scott and I worked on this. He yeah. was on the select board. Uh, I was too. Um, and, oh, I you were on the select board then too. I was chair, as a matter And it failed the first vote, and they reduced the cost of it to like $2 million. Uh, I agree with Charlotte that we should be concerned or careful with the agreeing to financing yet another fire station. Uh, in Woodbury, um, but I just want you to, we came up about affordable housing here. Um, things um, aren't what they used to be in terms of cost. The the average cost to build a house in the state of Vermont is $555,000. So to build a fire station for two million, of the size we had there, that's, that fire station would probably be seven million now. This is FYI. It, it could be a small one and it'll be expensive. Just yes, but well, my point is that <laughs> yeah. we need to be involved in that because that's one, I mean, yeah. we're paying more than we are. I know Denise used to attend those that's, meetings. Um, it wasn't an official I can tell you it was Denise Wheeler and yeah. Barry Bernstein. Oh, Barry was yeah. going. Oh, but those okay. people were doing it on their own initiative. It wasn't a formal assignment. Uh, these meetings are being had without like a formal invite. Yeah, us. I see. Okay. Seven. Who's eight? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Slow down. She's watching cat videos. <laughs> it, 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 one, one last comment, and I'll, I'll drop this. But you know, it, it's always for the 18 years I was on the select board. It always kind of, I'll say, bothered me. And Rose has heard me say this, that we are the only town in the state of Vermont that funds two fire companies. And I would encourage you folks, finance committee, if you will, to explore why that is and what, what makes us so unique in this circumstance, unique, so unique. And why can't we figure out a way to yeah. be 
like everyone else. That's a good thought. We also have seven post districts, postal districts. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a pretty yeah. unique town in a lot of ways. So there are seven post offices in Cal's? No, but seven postal zip districts. Codes. Zip, zip, zip codes. codes. Zip codes. Huh. <laughs> Made it interesting when I was 911 coordinator <laughs> trying to figure out. But there are four. Yeah. So um, let's go back. To, yeah. The second document, which is the budget process, the reason I wrote that is simply because I have, I have heard, um, I don't know where, that you might be starting your budget planning process late summer. And, uh, uh, with a, and I'm sure you're going to have some education pieces as part of that. So I just put this together for when you start that, um, this is something that you might want to think about as, as you do that, that's all. So I, I also realize that there are a lot of people here who, who do have a fairly, um, uh, have a lot of experience and knowledge in the, um, in, in various finance parts and so I, I didn't, I'm not implying that you all need <laughs> very basic things, but I, I thought I'd start there anyway, just um, not knowing what the range of um, experience is. And I apologize if I gave anybody the sense that I was implying that you didn't have any knowledge, because I know that's not true. Can I ask a, a question, Charlotte? So are you proposing, and maybe this isn't even totally clear yet, um, that the committee would assist in supporting that that budgeting or budget prep process? Sure. Uh, it, yeah. Sure. Um, it, it, you know, the, for this, if there's a group, it's not going to do anything unless you ask. So it's it's sort of a service piece. Um, and part of your, I don't, part of your, we don't really have time for this, but it might be really nice to have this information. Yeah, I think it's come up a couple of times with, uh, with Sandra. I think um, getting some greater transparency within kind of core categories so that we can do better, a better job of forecasting yeah. or trying to predict what future costs would be. Um, or identifying where we've had overages that were, you know, attributed to a very specific yeah. circumstance, yeah. Um, and where we might not want to um, necessarily just carry over. Okay, well, we saw this much. We we're going to increase it by two percent next year to make sure that we're covered. I mean, that, yeah. no. that's that's not a very helpful no. exercise or right. sustainable one for that matter. But yeah. um, it. But every everybody has the things that distract them from being able to do those uh -huh. deep dives. Yes. Um, I'm one who really appreciates those things, but I certainly don't have the time to commit to doing them. And I think yeah. it would be yeah. really beneficial to uh, to kind of say that these are the core areas, or even just to say we would like to see you know some red flags on where where you think that a budget is way off or either underserved or way overserved relative to expenses that have been sure. incurred in the uh, in the short term of the last yeah. last year um, and uh, my understanding is that uh, Sandra every once in a while will say something like well this is something the select board needs to think about and I you know she has uh, she gives you good advice <laughs> and she makes herself very readily available yeah. at, at, and and I I really appreciate that. I wish I yeah. even had the time to take her up on her generous <laughs> offers to provide clarity wherever I have questions. But um, that's where I think a, a committee to to help kind of work on those things, um, so that maybe the budget budgeting process isn't such an intense period. Yeah. You know, right before right before the uh, town meeting or in the first quarter um, of of the year. Um, if we can task a committee with some of that work so that we're considering it throughout the year, um, yes. I think that could be better. Uh, and certainly that's a, <coughs> that is a super idea, not to compress it into a small period too close to when it needs to be finalized. Yeah, right. yeah. absolutely. 
So how do you see yourself working with Sandra? Or do you see yourself working with Sandra at all? Well, I don't know, but I think <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> Because she's so knowledgeable and um, we've always... Well, for example, when she's helping, starting to build the budget, could yeah. you be helping her gather information like sure. what's the inflation yeah. rate or whatever yeah. it is she wants to... Yeah. 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 Um, and of course, you know, the thing about um, budgeting is that you're looking at the future and nobody knows. <laughs> so... I what is your background working in budgeting and finance? Um, so I have a doctorate from Stanford in education policy, but I worked for five years, maybe six years, for the Office of Budget Management there. And we had lots of money, so it wasn't a real challenge. <laughs> she was also on the school board. Oh, yes, I was on the school board for many years. That's right. And um, so that was... Uh, dealing with the, the state systems, with you know their categories and their, and their um, uh, rules for a high budget, very like town. Mm -hmm. So how do you envision this? Do we appoint you uh, and some no, other people? No, you don't need to appoint. Um, okay. You just need to con um, keep in mind Mm -hmm. that help is available if you want to delegate out. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I, I think a committee is very formal and not really needed. And are we talking about just you? Or yeah, but I would, there are several people who have volunteered to be helpful, and so depending on the topic, I would draw on others for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but very ad hoc. Are you, go ahead. I don't know who thought it up, but when I came asking to, um, kind of see this grant, energy grant thing through. I came in thinking, oh yeah, we gotta have a committee, there's always a committee, blah, blah, blah. And somebody on the board said, you do it. Find people if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> no meetings, no nothing. Yeah. No report to the board. Boy, that's, that was genius. We would have thought it up. But now you're the callous MERP administrator. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, um, I don't know, maybe do it again. Right? Okay. Um, I, I think that um, Sandra and I might together uh, um, think about how to introduce uh, a budget process to you all when you're ready mm -hmm. and, and maybe guide some discussion for things that you might want to talk about. I think Sandra has been thinking about that. Yeah. So um, that I'm sure two brains are always better than one. So, yeah. Yeah. We we go on. I do like the idea of having some kind of a written statement of our priorities, like our sort of I don't know, not philosophical priorities, but just sort of an overarching budget statement. Um, I talked to Sharon Fannin a little bit about their budgeting process, and mm -hmm. I don't know if you wrote it down or not, John, but I mean, there were definitely, you know, things that they, what sort of principles that they operated under, and um, so I don't know if ours would be similar to that or not, but um, for example, this professional staffing thing, I want, you know, I want to, that's a priority for me anyway. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. Yeah. And you probably all, all talked about this when you uh, had your first select board meetings, what, what, what you were talking about was important to each of you, right? No, we didn't, because mm -hmm. there were so many fires to put out, oh, honestly. That's, right. Right. Well, that's how I yeah. feel anyway. I don't, yeah. We, yeah. we no, actually right. never had a conversation but like that. Right. It's, it, it is about what are the things that you care about, what are your priorities, and making sure that you find a way to put dollar signs on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Donna's going to start helping us, so, well, a little bit to, in next. We're going to talk about treasure, and I'm hoping at the next meeting to start talking about more, in more depth, about what kind of office staff we need. I would posit one more piece of information, because we haven't had this opportunity to uh, have that conversation of what priorities um, would be. You know, I think... Um, we, we're 
elected to make decisions and help govern a town, and sometimes I feel the information um, isn't as readily available um, to to us to make quick decisions in the timetables that we're, we're needing to. Um, and thankfully, the you know, budgetary process could be kind of a longer one that we can be more mindful and thoughtful of. Um, I'm, since Jan is in the room uh, representing the Planning Commission, um, you know, one, of, yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I think really is, is, is pretty critical is the quantitative information about the town and its community. Um, and we have a great town plan. Um, it sounds like that's the next project on the list. Um, but the quantitative information in there is, is significantly dated. Um, and we are largely making decisions as a community relative to what's represented in that town plan and its aspirations in a point of time. So, you know, in a budgetary process, if we're seeing increases in a particular line item or a need for uh, increases in a particular line item, it would be helpful to also look at well, what kind of population or demographic changes have, have we seen. And that's, that's, a, that's a heavy lift, I think, for, uh, for a single individual or even a, a committee to really dig into. But you know, certainly bringing some quantitative information about uh, new houses or, uh, or, or permitting information that would help inform trends in the community uh, relative to growth or not growth. Um, that could be an interesting point of collaboration with this kind of appointment and one of the other subcommittees of the town as we're getting ready to go through that budgeting process. Yeah. Okay, I think you got yourself a job. <laughs> Thanks. And, and certainly, uh, you know, the, the work that Donna is doing is also really absolutely key. And um, we're really lucky she volunteered. Yeah. Okay, speaking of which, um, Donna's been working from two points of view. Um, well, you, you go ahead, you talk about it. We originally started talking about all positions, but you carved out the treasurer as a discrete position, and we'll talk right, about I think this is the priority. Yeah. Um, I love the priority for standard. Um, so you have the job description. Okay. Yes. 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 It was in the folders. Yeah. It, it says draft if, if you, know, you feel you want to add something. This job description started with Wendy Wilton. And um, so I've had some input. Sanders had some input. I met with Sandra before I even had the job description. Um, she's now seen it twice. I think, Anne, you sat down with her mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. um, it would continue to use NEMRIC for um, payroll and for monthly reconciliations, uh, mainly so that there's a separation of duties when it comes to the reconciliations. But also, for payroll, it's all the federal and state quarterly, monthly, annual um, reporting that has to go on. Um, and I had a long conversation with Wendy Wilton, who's all over the state, as you know, with NEMRIC. And she thinks uh, it's going to be difficult to really find the person that we want, that we're not going to replace Sandra. But she feels that if we get a really good bookkeeper with business background, that Sandra can bring that person along, turn that person in NEMRIC. Um, and then Wendy's willing to help as well. So the cost of, for NEMRIC um, doing payroll is $6,000 a year. That's in the budget. If you go to bi-weekly, it's $5,000 a year. Um, and I think, aren't we paying them hourly for, are we paying Wendy hourly for doing the reconciliation? That's $110 an hour. Yeah. Um, well, why isn't it half if they do half the work? Where's the what? You said, well, you said it's 6000 if they do it every week and 5000 if they do it No, it's 6000 a year for, yeah. for, for NEMRIC to do payroll. Uh-huh. If, if it's decided to go payroll not every week but every two weeks, yeah. 
We save a thousand dollars. Why don't we save more? I don't understand. It's half the work, isn't it? No. Oh, oh. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the still inputs are all. It's just cutting the check. That's just that's one piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Okay. I guess I have to ask them right back. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Because we pay half as much. Then. <laughs> right. No, I am. I am surprised that it isn't biweekly because I think most place, places pay biweekly we anymore. Try. We tried we for years, try. and then when the unionization effort, the last one, came into play, uh, they, they asserted that that was a bargaining issue, and that because they had established that they were seeking a union, that that would be an unfair labor practice, ULP. And so that would be something they could bring to the Labor Relations Board. So. We had hoped to resolve that in our union negotiations, but we reached a completion point, but the, the staff at the time didn't sign the contract, so. So um, Ann also suggested that we have a hiring committee. And so I have some names of some people. I don't know if you want to approve it or. Yeah, I think that's what we would have to do. If, uh, what I had suggested is that they continue to refine this if they wanted to. Oh, the committee? The, yeah, the okay. job description and to turn it into um, you know, something we would advertise. Yes. So I'm not thinking this committee would you know, write the advertisements. Which, would, the advertisements. which would include a lot of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's, there's two things. One is we should figure out the salary. Figure um, out what? 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 Salary. Salary. No. Salary. Um, we can ask our finance advisory committee to work on that. <laughs> and I think it would be really helpful, I can get this from Santa, is to have um, a, a list of benefits and the value of the benefits, because that is a chunk of money yeah. right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For a total yeah. compensation. Yeah. Also, personnel policy really needs that thing. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. another topic. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and I'm assuming this will be a salaried position, not an hourly position. Uh, uh, we haven't discussed it. Yeah. Um, I guess we'd take advice on that from, from both our committees. <laughs> um, but so you would do the advertising and, uh, and then read through whatever resumes we get and then select some for an interview and conduct a preliminary interview yeah, and I bring us some candidates. I think preliminarily this committee or some members of the committee would, would meet with applicants. Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't have to see anybody that wasn't qualified. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And um, I guess we would have to appoint you as a real committee in order to do that. And you'd, I don't, I suppose for interviews you don't have to warn as an open meeting. Well, my hope is to have like one organizational meeting with this group mm -hmm. and then we would go off and do our thing. Right. I mean, okay. We had a limited number of meetings. Yeah. Um, and, and Sandra's agreed to be on the committee. Great. Yeah. So who would you propose for this committee? Um, I've got Sandra, Marianne Miller. Are you all familiar with Marianne Miller? Mm -hmm. She was former director of Head Start with Capstone Community Action. Um, then I asked Louis Franco. He's a human resource, well, he kind of semi-retired. Uh, former human resources administrator with Concept2 for 15 years, Northern Power for 10 years. Can you, can you speak up? I can hardly hear you. Oh, I can. You want to email us here? Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and you email us. And and also, to the other okay, Let me take a note here. Okay, committee. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Um, and then, then also, um, Judy Robert. I'm hoping she'll write the ads. And she's. Uh, yeah, and she was former town clerk. Was she treasurer also? No, that, that was my both. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and if you uh, establish this as a committee of the select board, the meetings are going to have to be warned. So no, that's a problem. So don't, if you don't establish it, if there's a group of citizens getting together to assist you in an informal way. Yeah, but then they would have to bring us all the advertisements and ask us to actually deal with it. So right. it's. Just I have another group that's meeting informally. Yeah. That, that's not, that they haven't authorized yet, really. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So would you prefer we not appoint a committee tonight? I think we need to move forward. So I mean, we really need to have, a, it would be great if we could have a treasurer during tax season. So, so we would appoint you as a committee and you'll, you'll be subject to the open meeting law? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. What's, what's the name of the committee? Uh, no. Treasurer Hiring Committee, I yeah. suppose. Oh, just, oh. Well, it's just, it's just this one, one job. Right well, now. but if you don't say Treasurer Hiring Committee, if you just say Hiring Committee, then it could carry over to other jobs, possibly. I think we might like drop the whole other. It's, a, it's a, yeah. sort of a larger concept when we get to how we might want okay. to yeah. reorganize the office. Yeah, but it, it is could a be used question, in the, it? it could be used in the future as sure. a standing uh, committee with, with the same number. <laughs> yeah, we with with the same. I think, I, I think for now, in order to make sure we get who we want, we'll just give it this one discreet task. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> open meeting. Yeah, it's so much easier to not have a committee, just have a random group. <laughs> so, um, that's, you would like us to appoint you tonight, then, and ask uh, you? Yeah, I think we need to move yeah. forward. So. Okay. Are we ready for that? So you have the list of names? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, can you say them out loud so we can hear them? Oh. Um, okay, I can say them. Donna, Sandra, uh, Marianne Miller, Louis Franco and Judy Robert. Okay. Um, so I would entertain a motion to appoint those five people to a hiring committee for the purpose of recruiting and um, screening potential candidates for the position of treasurer for the town of Callis. So moved. Okay. Second. Any further discussion on that? All right, all in favor? J Jordan? Are they also defining the role of treasurer? They may refine the role, let's say. Yeah, okay. this, is, this is the job, job description right now. If anybody has any you know. Like Sa Sandra's seen it. I, I don't think other, the other members of Mary, yeah, Mary Ann's seen it. And she's commented on it, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's commented on yeah. it. Judy's seen it. Um, she but I think the select board should be defining. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to. Th that's not really the role of the committee. The role of the committee is to do the advertising, the placement of the ads. Um, so you would like this to be the final description, or would you like the committee to look at it a little bit and discuss it before we... The committee? Or the Is this five-person committee. Um, uh, my thought was that they could help us. There's three members of all the senior. Okay. So I, I don't think... So you think this is final, then? Right, this is select board has some input or so I'd input. like to see it get tightened up, like editing and things like that. Like what? It's, it's a little long, it's got a lot of weird spacing and stuff like that. So at least on the, the version on the Google Drive, so just, just a little stuff like that. I mean if I think if it could be shortened that would be useful. Um, you know, there's there's some overlap between like the yeah. Experience and ability, you know, required abilities and things like that. So I don't feel super strongly about it because you, you know, if you're doing the the screening and stuff. But, um, Is that something that you and I can talk about? Um, no, I thought that's what the committee <laughs> help, but I just well, like I ask the committee. I don't think they're going to worry about formatting and. Um, would you just like to write up what you'd like to see changed and send it to them? Sure. Okay. Okay. Good. So um, then, let's see. I don't know that we have to move to accept this job description. Well, for example, it doesn't say how many hours a week it is. Um, are we assuming it's a full-time job? Um, okay, so this is what Sandra said. She said, with Nemrick doing what I described, and with four hours a week of a, um, a treasurer assistant, especially through tax season, that that would be 32 hours a week. But if it's a salary position, we don't have to define the number of hours. 
And also, I talked to the league about that as a select board. Because right now, our personnel policy says everybody works 40 hours a week. Um, and the league says it's up to the select board to determine what the expectation is for number of hours. Like the, the road who works 40 hours. Um, the town clerk can do whatever she wants. Um, and, and I have some notes for meeting with Barbara and Sandra and, and Judy about hours in the past. So this number of hours really comes up when we look at the office and the town as a whole. Are you suggesting that it might not be full time? No, I'm not. No, I mean, I'm saying okay. it's going to be 32. It's going to be at least 32 hours. Okay. And especially if this person, if we hire somebody who, you know, doesn't have municipal experience, doesn't know number, there's going to be, you know, some training time. And it'll be 60 hours during <laughs> tax season. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really fluctuates throughout the year. Right, Barbara? It does, but it depends on who's going to be entering and process, entering all the tax checks and processing them, because that's the time taker. So are you going to pay the treasurer at a higher rate to do that, or are you going to pay the assistant treasurer at a lower rate to do that? <laughs> so that, 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 that depends. The treasurer position reports to the select board. That would be the select board's call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does all that need to be put in here? I mean, I think that's your point. Well, actually, we did. There was a mention of the assistant, and then Mary Ann took it out. So. <laughs> uh, no, I meant whether the position is full time. Um, I mean, there's. I think it says. I didn't remember seeing that. Yeah, I can add that in here. I mean, I think you have to say if it's going to be a salary position. Um, okay. I can bring you guys another draft if so that would be helpful. Well, then you'd have to wait two weeks, although I suppose you could get going on figuring out where, where and how you're yeah. going to advertise yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and we could, in fact, you could even advertise it and we could tighten this up. Right. And then some of those could become points of negotiation mm -hmm. when we um, hopefully get some candidates. Okay. Uh, so, would you please read the motion again, Rose, that's on the table? Um, nobody, did anybody make that motion, or you talk, You said you would entertain it? But anyway, the motion is going to be to we'll appoint those above named five people to a hiring committee for the purpose of recruiting and screening applicants for the position of town treasurer. Okay. And advertising, right? That would be recruiting. recruiting. Mm -hmm. So that's how they would recruit. I'm still having a hard time seeing seeing how they can move forward with advertising and recruiting for something that is not finalized, and we don't have costs associated with the salaries. Yeah, I agree. So I, we can form the committee to those individuals, but I think the explicit first task has to be to refine and propose two, two finalized positions or potential positions that then get approved by the select board. Uh, and once they're, once those are approved, they could move forward with soliciting candidates. I, I think the challenge is that we're, if, even if we feel like we've done a, or the committee has done some pretty great homework on this, it's a very competitive market right now, and, and how do we adapt or change the role relative to candidates who might might be applying for it? So I think there's gonna there's gonna have to be some dialogue with the select board. What's in the budget? I mean, so in fiscal year 23, the treasurer was paid fifty five thousand dollars as treasurer, and eleven thousand as delinquent tax collector. Um, the year before that, it was 50694 for the treasurer, just the treasurer. But in fiscal year 24, you've got these lumps. So you, for treasurer, in the, in the budget, it says treasurer, business manager, town administrator, 66500 You get a director of public works for 80000 So as I'm looking at all the other jobs in the office, I'm looking at these numbers here, too, because 
that's what we have to work with for salaries. And I'm going to get that compensation book from Gina over in East Montpelier. Okay, so I think what we could do is appoint you tonight, you could get started, and we could ask both you and Charlotte to come back next week and talk to us about, about what you've decided about these other questions that still need to be answered. Right, so the other questions would be pay, uh, yeah. hours. Did you say hour? Pay okay, hours for this would be a salary position. And I don't know how you'd want to work together on that, but Charlotte, that sounds like something you could really help with in terms of figuring out what the salary should be. Okay, although Donna says she's got some good sources. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. But it, has to be, it has to be balanced with these other, with potential other positions, <coughs> position or whatever. Mm. Which is, which is, I'll be talking to you in two weeks about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. About a new, new position? Well, I don't know if it's going to be a new position. I mean, it's... Um, yeah, we don't know yet we don't know. What, <laughs> what it will be. <laughs> but we'll talk about that next week. We've yeah, really got yeah. to move on. I, I think so, I've got enough information here to, to, you know, to talk to Charlotte and figure out the salary. Um, Okay, and, hours, exactly. and you can start working on things like where to advertise, exactly. but you'll come back to us before you yeah. do anything, and we'll just talk about yeah. it next okay. week. All right, so there's a motion on the floor. I think that nobody made it. Nobody made it. Oh, would somebody like to move the motion? Is that okay, Jordan? Does that sound like a good way to Yeah, I, would just, I guess I would say we should probably just charge them a little bit uh, more uh, broadly to a facilitate or to um, consult and facilitate on seeking a treasurer of the town. So would you like to change the words? Um, what are the words, Rose? Mm -hmm. um, Jordan will probably make a motion to <laughs> appoint those above named five people to a hiring committee for the purpose of recruiting and screening applicants for the position of town treasurer. Okay. Appoint those five people to a hiring committee for the purpose of recruiting and screening applicants for the position of town treasurer. So before they actually do recruiting, they need to figure out these details. I would, I mean, so I guess I would have had uh, for the purpose of advising. Of what? For the purpose of advising. Advising. Mm -hmm. uh, recommend. The select board? The select board, yeah. On the roles and responsibilities associated with the position of treasurer. Okay and facilitating a hiring process. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. So how does that whole thing redo? <laughs> <laughs> For the purpose of advising the select board, the roles and responsibilities associated with the treasurer. Mm -hmm. And for recruiting and hiring? And, for, and for facilitating a hiring process. Yes. I see. Yeah. So you're removing that language. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have that. Okay. So I, have, I have a question about if this is an appropriate time to ask a question. Sure. Um, so, Donna, you, you were talking about that kind of the chunks in the budget that are there for staffing. Yeah. And I'm just curious how that differs from, say, like the chunk in the budget that there was for an attorney that is like, you know, we had to spend 10 times more than that for attorneys in this fiscal year than was budgeted. So, and I'm not suggesting we need to spend 10 times as much, but I'm just saying, like, are, are you suggesting it's more finite than? you know, what the needs of the, the town for attorneys, for example, was, and you see what I'm saying? I'm saying, yeah, there are things in the budget, but that's not, that's actually not. If you want to change it, you certainly Because if the market it. won't bear a $55,000 a year treasurer, then we might need to. Right, because you've got $80,000 in here for, for another position that we're not going to have. I mean, I think this is just something we have to look at as a whole mm -hmm. two weeks from now. 
Yeah, yeah I guess I'm just saying those two chunks added up are, are actually not the limit. They may be the goal mm -hmm. that we want to work within, but they're not actually a limit that we can't exceed. Right, right. I mean, you, you can move money around. Yeah. Or exceed the budget. Or exceed the budget. Yeah. Absolutely, you can. Or hire an assistant at a lower rate, and then we've been there. Hey, I don't want to do that. <laughs> pay a treasurer by the hour. No, I don't mean. I mean, I'm not referring to Barbara. I'm referring to past. Oh, okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor. Is <laughs> Jordan Keyes made a motion to appoint the above named five people to a hiring committee for the purpose of advising the select board on the roles and responsibilities associated with the treasurer. And then I have that other part about recruiting and screening applicants. As well as. As, as well as. as put before the recruiting thing. As facilitating well as, the process. Facilitating yeah. the process. Hiring process. Right. As well as, okay, so let's start that again. Jordan made the motion to appoint those above me five people to the hiring committee for the purpose of advising the select board about the roles and responsibilities associated with the treasurer, as well as recruiting and screening applicants. Facilitating the process. No, strike recruiting yes. and yeah. screening. And screening, strike that. And replace it with. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Jordan, okay, appoint the hiring committee for the purpose of advising the select board about the roles and responsibilities associated with the treasurer position. Yes. I'm sure. As well as facilitating the process. As well as. Yeah, facilitating the hiring process. Well, that's the hiring process. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. That that gets it all. Okay, everybody understand the motion. Need a second. You haven't got a second. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I want to make sure everybody's got the motion first. <laughs> Jordan Keyes made a motion to appoint the above named five people, and I'll, put, I'll move them into that thing, um, to a hiring committee for the purpose of advising the select board about the roles and responsibilities associated with the treasurer's position, as well as facilitating the hiring process, and I could get rid of that for the position, facilitating the hiring process for... That's period. 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 That's yeah. my period. period. Or period. Then I'll get rid of that. Okay. Excellent. Good. Can we have Thank a second, you. please? Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Can I second my own? Second. No. Thank you. <laughs> you cannot. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are so behind Nailed our it. schedule. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks a lot. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John's left. So John had that. Donna, do you know if we can open the windows here? I asked John about that today. There's no screens. And these, oh, okay. these windows are. They were painted, right? That was the only There's a fan behind that door. Oh, it's right over there. Oh, there's oh, a fan over there by. They actually got it out of the day. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a, and it's a quiet fan. Um, so we're getting to the reports. Um, do we need to hear um, some of these things? I'm hoping we can skip over them. Like maybe we don't need reports from emergency management, Curtis Pond, shared documents, collective bargaining. I think just with the emergency services. There he is. Was really hoping to put in a plug for us to attend the June 29th meeting. All right. Nick, would you like to put in a plug I for us attending? I would. Um. <laughs> The, our regional representative uh, from Vermont University Management uh, offered and encouraged us to have, a, um, have him come and do a presentation 
and also uh, somebody from who is on emergency management from regional planning commission is going to attend as well. Uh, he said it would be very useful to have some, some select board representation there, road crew. John just said he's going to come. Uh, and the purpose is to just to describe the, the role of Vermont emergency management during an incident, uh, what are the responsibilities of the select board, what kind of communication uh, channels are available. And so it's a, it's a basic orientation to the state's role when we have an incident that we need to be managing. So strongly encourage. It, uh, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's Thursday, June 29. It's at in, 6 o'clock. I have it on my calendar. So I think calendar. you've done this already. Uh, <laughs> and let's see. And what time? Uh, six. Six. And 90 minutes. Okay. We'll keep it. We'll keep it to the 90 minutes. Okay, thanks. So great. It'd be really very helpful to have you here. Okay. All right, everybody? Thank you. Okay, thank you. It'll be here. Where is it? Yes, right here. And we'll be using this screen a lot. Okay. So oh, let's... It'll, it'll be like, we'll post it there. Uh, yeah. Did you wait all this time just to say that? Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if I'd known, I would have let you do that right away. I'm interested in what you're doing. <laughs> All right, shall we move back to roads then? We'll boom more. Okay. I think I might quickly try to keep it super tight. I spoke to Toby earlier today um, because we had the two, we had the one for Kubota that had come out earlier, and then they had also spec'd out one. The second one, which is like a John Deere. Um, Toby said either one is fine. The issue is whether or not we have a mower on the ground running, and they have, the current one is currently out running, it's not a pretty cut, but it's doing the mowing job. Um, John did hand me the, a note that they had written because they had been thinking about longevity, ability to get it fixed, availability of parts. Um, they did find that the second one, um, the John Deere, is very thoughtfully built out, so it's very balanced. Um, she's Montpelier has one and it's able to cut higher than the Kubota and just overall a more <sighs> nuanced machine for about the same price. So John handed me Deere Select Board. We wish to order the John Deere roadside mower. We understand. Wait, the John Deere, not the Kubota? Not the Kubota. So the Kubota, they have been hearing repeated instances of the frame breaking. It's a kind of chronic issue with it and so that makes them nervous that it's Okay, so the Kubota is like about 8,000 more? I'm sorry, the John Deere? I think they're pretty close. I'd have to go pull up, because I don't know if the Kubota had the source well. I think it had the source mm -hmm. well discount mm -hmm. as part of it. Are you okay. buying a tractor and a mower, or a mower to go on the tractor? It's a mower tractor. So it's going to be completely, it's going to be a... It is equipped, pre-equipped yeah. with a boomer. Okay, so we know that we can we can get the Kubota now. Can we get the John Deere now? No, so the John Deere would take a few months. So we wouldn't have it for the end of the season. But they have the one that they have is currently running. They said it wouldn't make another, they weren't sure it would make it through this mowing. They think that it'll make it through another there, We've got two machinists, so they got it going. I mean, that's... And they can also rent the mower. Too, right? so no. Yeah, running a mower these days is prohibited because it's everyone's doing it and getting it when you need it. They, um, yeah, you have to get on the schedule way ahead of time. But I was clear that Toby was clear that they needed that. That if they went that route, the one that they have, they have to keep going until such time. Does Toby agree with this? Toby should. I'm sorry, I'm asking all these questions. Yeah, no, Toby is Toby finding the way. He said whichever one they think is best, it can be done. The big thing is that we have a mower on the road. Can like, we get a lease to buy option for the John Deere? Yes. We can. Yeah, it's the same. Yes. It's the same deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Um. 
I understand. I guess the scarcity and the challenge of trying to get a trying to get a rental, but the math still doesn't work relative to renting a mower versus owning the mower and having it, or and track and or tractor and having it pay off in that period of time. Um, and there've been a lot of kind of conversations, kind of loose conversations about pretty significant equipment purchases for the. Uh, for the road department or highways department, and uh, I think you know I'm, I'm glad to be having a conversation about a tractor. I've got questions on whether or not this tractor is going to be appropriately sized to do some other extracurriculars. That they're very versatile pieces of equipment. Frankly, I've been looking at pieces of attachments and implements that would replace the function of a grader. Um, and maybe make the maintenance of the roads a little bit more tenable um, and sustainable uh, for the town at a, at a better price point. So I think a, a broader conversation about equipment acquisitions uh, needs to be had before we plunk $180,000 or $190,000 on a tractor with a boom arm. Um, it's, it's a 110 horse tractor, which is a lot of horsepower, but for an extra 20 to 30 horsepower, you can add a class of implements on it that can do a lot more for the town. And there's just a lot of things that are gonna be affecting the highway department budget in the next coming months that are going to then impact the budget moving moving into the 2025 budgeting process as well. So it seems like just kind of a tenuous time to be purchasing a mower um, of that cost. Well, I would ask, Ann, you're sure you can get through the next mowing session? Because at the last meeting, they said, we can't do it. We can't make it this fall. We have to do something else. And that they went and made it happen. They did, I don't know how they but, pulled this stuff off, but. So, okay, and, and then they said if we were to order most of these pieces of equipment, it would take probably a couple of years because they have to build it. And so. Oh, no, not with the, this. They've spoken to the person. They would no, take, I understand. Okay. That was why they wanted Whatever to go things, for yeah. this one. So. I guess I want to know when we could have such a machine, if we could have a different machine. Not, as far as what would we be able to get the Kubota? We if we have to, if we go jo what Jordan suggested, mm -hmm. we might not get it for two years, according to what they said last time. Okay, and I don't know, are you suggesting something that has removable pieces? Uh. Because I think one of the concerns is that the boom arm it's something that should be a, like permanently affixed and done. There is some concern because we had talked with Toby about having like a tractor that you could attach this thing to or that thing to, and um, there's concerns about the integrity of the tractor if things are coming on and off and it's not designed like the. The one that's back down, I realize it's specific, but mowing is very specific and it's very mm -hmm. timely when it has to happen and it's very difficult to lease because everyone else must lease at that exact same time and perhaps if we got on it in November and got the person, I don't know, but... Um, I, has, the, has the road crew done any work uh, looking into other people who might be contracted to do the mowing? As I far as hiring to, people, we used to hire people, right. but this year, I mean, they're they're very swamped. So they I think you're actually looking for. I think you're actually saying like a service, a service. with its own like, equipment rather than um, right. So I, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. a couple of things. One is uh, you know, is that is is that we need we need the service to be done in a timely manner but also that we're having to procure a piece of equipment that's very specific to a particular task and it's a fairly expensive piece of equipment so if we can't if we can't like take a comprehensive look at what that tractor can do uh, like more holistically then it, it, it 
seems to point me towards wanting to have somebody else with a specialized piece of equipment um, for that, and then the town is buying a tractor relative to what it wants, um, and, and not just that, that one particular purpose. I mean, we're a town of limited resources and, and roads, and... What would you suggest as a process to do this? Well, actually, can I ask, what is the process we're doing now? Are we potentially voting on a $190,000 piece of equipment? Potentially. What's the ask? And the mower that they're using now, um, sorry, it doesn't no. um, The mower that we're using now is an old tractor with a mower on it? They, they weren't even sure it would make it. Uh, the, yeah, the it's, stood no it. one will work on it. It's beyond, it's, it's too old to yeah. For anyone to work on, we've got several guys that are extremely good mechanics and have basically, you know, the machinist version of duct tape to back together. You know, it's it's not a pretty cut. It does the job, you know, but um, it's not viable for re like permanent repairing and making it run for a long time. It's it's on its last legs. I mean, and as I understood it, they want to do it twice a year. So they do it, um, and, and the first time is very specific because they need to hit it right when the invasives are at a certain stage. Before they go to seed. And yeah. everybody in the state wants to do it then. Right. Yeah. So get, you have to work at it a year ahead to get either lease or a service to do it. I believe there's a lot more flexibility in the fall. They like to do it a second time, but Okay, but that's the So the that's upcoming mowing is like what next week, the week after? No, they're now. working on right they're now. now. Okay, is the and so they'll get through this one. Yes. Yeah, I think they will. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, what happens if you don't do it in the fall? Is that a terrible thing? Does anybody know? It impedes um, snow. Uh huh. Okay. So we need to get it done in the fall, but we may be able to get somebody else to do it if we don't have a machine because there's a little, there's quite a lot more flexibility then. Right. Okay. Yeah, John. Yes, public comment. Mm -hmm. So, I agree with Jordan. Um, this history, I think is important. When East Montpelier bought that very expensive tractor, it was $125,000. And boom, as soon as they got it, the road crew at the time and Toby came in here, let's buy one too. And we said no. And yes, we bought a used tractor, and we knew the mower was old. But that cost $19,000, and we've gotten four years out of it. Um, so you figure that one out, what that cost the town. Um, and you could replace the belly mower on that, and put a new mower. That tractor runs perfectly. I know it does. Um, the mower saw a lot of use. It came out of Connecticut, I think Wilton, Connecticut. Um, and, but we knew it was just meant to get us through like five years so we could have this conversation. But of course, $175,000 just to mow the roadsides, so we had the same concerns. That was a huge investment for a, a machine we'd use for a very limited period of time. If you were to set up a lease situation well in advance, you probably could rent a machine for next year, this year, or five year lease or something. But that's, that's a big expenditure, and um, as Jordan has said, there are also belly mount mowers that you can mount to a tractor and remove from a tractor. Um, and there are all different grades of tractor in terms of weight. You can't just go by horsepower. The big groovy thing is people say, I got a 110 horsepower tractor, but it's the, the carriage, the, the structure, it's a, it's a medium duty tractor or a light duty tractor to get something that's substantial. I mean, maybe that's what this is. Um, I don't know, but, um, and lastly, those tractors, and I just want to inform the select board of the importance to force fire departments and road crews to look at use as well. Maybe not a $19,000 tractor, that was, kind of a triage thing, we found it. Um, the first instinct, it's not their money, and they want to buy new. The fire department came to us 
wanted to spend upwards of $750,000 saying, this is back when, three, four years, five years ago, saying it's impossible, you'll never find a machine like this, we need it right now, we're not in compliance. And Callis said, no, you need to go look for a used one and then come back if there's nothing available. Well, they found one with like 8,000 8, miles on it, like out of Chicago. And it saved us two hundred, three hundred thousand oh. dollars. So this is the kind of thing that these machines come up for sale. I know, but the not is we've been talking about because as someone who's read Slackboard Minutes for years, going and buying used equipment, having it come and then immediately die and then nothing well, to do with repair. So the road crew has, was not about buying new, it was about talking about what kind of equipment needs are we going to have over the years, what are things that would be most important to have that work because of what they specifically do, the time that they do it, um, that it's something that's yeah. ongoing, yada yada. So they've been thinking about that and thinking about how do we get, we've talked about how to get used graders that aren't like from 1997, but maybe a wealthier town has used one for 10 years and then you can go in and get a better price and you can still get 10, 15, 20 years out of it yeah. because they are capable of fixing things. I think just with this summer because of just last year was kind of crazy and no one set up hiring a person to come and do it. There are issues with the tractor too. It's not just the mowing piece, just the whole package is problematic, um, but they have it going. They were thinking that, and that's just through discussion, that this might be a piece that is worthy of purchasing. It would last for 15 to 20 years. Okay, but it sounds to me like we want to have a longer discussion about this, and it's already 9 o'clock. I know, I wish you had these things so, earlier. <laughs> sorry, um, I didn't mean to pack the agenda this much, it just sort of happened. Um, so I would like a process here. Okay. For, uh, usually what we try to do, we try to do is for big items, we wouldn't purchase it unless something broke down and it was an emergency. Like we lose a plow truck in the middle of plow season. Okay. We put it on the warning for town meeting and let the voters consider that. Yeah, and that's what we were trying to avoid. But if we weren't going to buy one this fall, then we may as well if we're going to go that route. But it sounds like we need to have some people. Jamie, you got an idea? Well, What's our process? Well, I was just thinking we have a, a sort of a living document that's a capital plan, equipment plan for the road crew. And it seems to me like a lot of ideas have come up here of dual use and equipment, how much use each piece of equipment gets. And so it wouldn't make sense to me to spend that kind of money on a piece of equipment without looking at it, looking at it in the context of our, our capital equipment plan. So would anybody like to volunteer to look into this. I don't, it sounds like we need to talk to Toby, we need to talk to the road crew. Can, could, could I propose then that we, at, at the very least, I guess, take, take these quotes and that and look at it in one of our August agendas. Um, August. So that we can have a more dedicated conversation about where it falls in the context of the, um, Equipment purchasing scheme, or and what would we do between now and August? Well, I know they cannot hold it anymore. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, I guess what, what we're currently doing, which is using a mower that is. No, no. I mean, in terms of gathering information that would help us with this decision. It sounds like we need people to think about what are the options out there. Do we want to buy used? Can we find something new? I guess I would like the folks who are, who are involved in making this decision on identifying what the pieces of equipment are that they participate in the conversation. So we can have that conversation outside of a meeting. Um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if, uh, if there are two of us who want to meet with Toby, um, 
to talk to go over that and members of the road crew. But to Jamie's point, I guess to my point, that's a pretty significant investment um, to to make without without grander kind of context. And so I propose that that meeting happen or that conversation happen. I'd be happy to participate in it. Uh, I'm going to be gone for the next couple, for the next week, basically. So sometime between the last week of June or sometime in July, it would be nice to have that conversation, take a good look at what the plan is for pieces of equipment, what they do, and what the road crew wants to do. Yep. And look at that compared to these quotes and see if this is the tractor that is going to most appropriately service our needs. Excellent. And then uh, have yeah. a more comprehensive proposal or, or requests in August if we still need to have a conversation about a tractor, but if we don't, then maybe have a different conversation. Okay. And I would think if we were in, if we determine that we're in the market for quality used equipment after the mowing season or after the tractor season is the right time to uh, enter that market. Tractor season. Okay. Uh, okay. So should we be one or two? <coughs> Jordan, is this something you could do? I mean, I love equipment, so. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I, Maybe you could just. As long as I'm not buying it. Uh, yeah, uh, talk with Toby. You can talk about capital planning and. I'll just walk across the field and Toby and I can have a chat, I guess. But I think, I mean, I think it's important to include the road crew. I don't think this is a conversation right, that right. can be had absent of their input. Though, you know, I think we need we need to be both trying to meet the needs of the road crew or trying to get the work done. But we need to think about, you know, the long term okay. commitment that the town is making. All right, I will put it on an August agenda, and um, we'll look for a report at that time and a recommendation. Is that all right with everybody? And if somebody wants to join And has there been anybody other than Toby from the road crew that's been kind of spearheading equipment things? or equipment-related things? Uh, we gather every morning at 6, so yeah, it's an ongoing so discussion. the whole crew? Yep. I mean, Tyler and John probably are the ones going out and talking to different vendors and whatnot, but... Okay. Okay, thanks, Jordan. Um, no parking signs. Is this quick? If not, I'd like... Could we defer? I'm fine deferring it to the next meeting. Great. Thank you. So now other people in <laughs> other communities want signs, too. <laughs> yeah, and stop signs? Yeah, stop signs. I'll just quickly report that having talked to Toby and reread the traffic ordinance, stop signs and yield signs are very clearly part of the traffic ordinance. And so I think we need to do that in the more in the proper ordinance. detailed ordinance uh, okay. adjustment process. Okay, so that needs to wait then yeah. until we're ready for that needs to be in ordinance. Uh, class 4 Road, um, Leonard Road. Larry. Well, why don't you report first? <laughs> okay, so we... Do I to come forward or...? Oh, you're going to curb in it, so... Come forward. Um, previously, as you all might remember, uh, Larry had started work without a permit, um, and the group had gone out to look at it, to talk about the curb cut, and there was work that had already been done. So we had written up what it would cost if the road crew were to put back what had already been done the way it was. Since that time, um, kind of made some liberal changes. Uh, there's essentially like a new curb cut, which technically is better, it's straight, as opposed to before it was going up the road and down, which was the, um, the old way. But then you cut into the bank, so now what was that road is like a cliff. 
been dumping dirt from your excavation for the cellar on the roadway, which is not the surface material they need. They're stitching. So basically, there's another uh, 275 to 300 feet of impacted road, both with ditching the road surface, um, using things that are now like we talked about the ditching stones for the ditches, and you've got like wire and other kind of stuff in there. Um, so it's it's a mess from our perspective, you know, from the the way we want our roads to to look and that it really went all the way out. I mean, this haying and seeding at the very end of the road where it meets George Road. But the guys weren't able to put a concrete, I mean, we can write up the list, um, uh, but as far as cost of put it, it's, it's, it's hard to know until they know really what's under the road now because there has been a lot of disturbance on the top. So there's not, they don't really know what's going on you know, if you get down a few inches. Okay. Larry, are you here to listen or did you want to speak? Um, I got the impression this morning that I was in violation and I really thought that uh, I had done a bang up job over the weekend and I was gonna do some more seeding and stuff and thought I was 75, 80% done uh, other than putting the stone in the ditch. Uh, but but you put in a tent. different culvert than the one that was in your permit and you worked on more of the road than was authorized in your permit. Do I understand that correctly? Um, yes. I, I, I guess you could look, say, say that, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there was a the 270 feet that we talked with John about on here. Um, over the weekend, I decided that I don't really need that uh, spot there. Um, so I had taken some of the material that was in the road and, and sloped it up and covered out that entryway that I had, had been using. And, lower than that, about 100 feet lower, there was another entryway, and that's what I had been using to access my pro property. Um, I've had a, been able to have a 10-wheel dump truck get on the road and into the property, and um, we dug the cellar hole, and I used that material there, and I put it into the, the class for a road as a, as a base. Wasn't a kind of gravel specified in the permit? It, for, for the... Uh, or the top base, yes. This was, it's basically ledge stone. I mean, it's the same thing you would get from the gears. It's, it just wasn't washed, but it's mm -hmm. getting washed now. Um, mm -hmm. You can drive a fire truck, 10 wheel dump truck on it. Um, and I was prepared to uh, get the, the, uh, the stone put over the top and uh, get the, uh, the ditching stone. Um, basically, I call it a swale. Um, I had the, the bank was pretty well stabilized. I has um, hay bales up on the, on the sides to prevent any more of the road from coming down into the into the road. That that's basically what what had happened with the, with the class four road. Everything from the bank it came down, and everything was slanted my way. And that's when that you know, the, I had the culvert put in there. I, I did that illegally, I guess, years ago. And I just thought, well, well. Wouldn't it make just more sense to have the road slant away from all that? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. <clears throat> I've also had a, uh, a large uh, cement block that I've been dragging behind my tractor to compact the road. And uh, what I did at the end of where George Road and uh, Leonard Road is, I, when I was going up and down the road, I, I made some passes around. And so I basically leveled that the triangular piece where the where the roadway was. Um, we used to call it Jonio Turn or whatever. So I, I rooted all that up and and you know kind of leveled it out. And I seeded it over and I put hay over it. Um, and that's I guess I don't know, I set up a lot of flags or whatever. I mean well, 
about seeding a roadway and I don't understand it throwing grass on a on a road. I mean it's literally the road that you hate and and grass and like the culvert is now such that where it cuts off is gonna cause erosion right there as opposed to when it was 40 feet, it goes off and then down and it's less likely to cause erosion around. Yes, I, I, I installed a 20 foot culvert. Um, yes. And you saw it today. And they were concerned because it wasn't properly compacted. I understand you're dragging a cement log or something over it, but the, the culvert not only is way too short, but it's the already road, compressing because it's not. The road is, is not complete yet. I mean, uh, I, I think it's very question that you're not, you're not building it to any kind of relative road standards. And I understand that it's a class four road, but, but material that's dug up from a cellar hole, even though it has ledge in it or shale or whatever, is not, is not the same as a plant mix, even if it's a three inch minus plant mix from Lagoos, that, Lagoos that, that plant mix has got fines from rock and blasting. It's not earth and and pieces of shale, so that it, those are those aren't analogous pieces of material. Um, so, you know, I, my concern is that we kind of gave a, a little bit of leeway while trying to be pretty specific about what the building standards should be to come close to meeting an acceptable construction uh, construction practice relative to the input from the road crew uh, and their maintenance of the rest of the Calus roads, but you're falling pretty far short of that, plus expanding the scope. I mean, at this point, I've got questions about whether or not there's enough erosion control for all the disturbed earth that's happening. There's not. Um, and that, that's going to be a state issue uh, because you're not putting in any kind of stormwater check dam, sill fences, any of the things. I'm not there yet. Uh, no. You need to be there before you even start breaking earth. Uh, that those sill fences need to be in there before water can hit exposed earth and run down a hill. You need to have those silt fences in place because they're supposed to stop the silt from getting to the road surfaces, to the culverts, to anything else where they're going to continue to contaminate um, or impact other infrastructure or adjoining property owners, being some of whom would be the town, presumably, and the town's right of ways. So the road crew was concerned about there is erosion, just because where Leonard Road goes up, where it's pretty dug up, and currently, I believe you attempted to ditch on, you know, the far side of it where before it used to go that way but it's it's kind of dug up it's not really a ditch but if we get a heavy rain or something there's gonna be a whole lot of wah, just We're getting rain tonight I, I knew a lot of the material that was in the road right there I mean it basically soaked up as it was um, I've got everything channeled so it's gonna go to, to the ditch um, you know, when I started, there was this much silt in the road, and, and I wasn't even able to get my pickup truck through there. I got the culvert in. Um, nature's, you know, the water's finding its course there. I have a lot of uh, stone in front of my culvert to catch any sediment, so to speak, uh, before I actually get the ditch stones in with the, with the uh, what do you call them, coffer dams? Um, Check dams. Yeah. But check, check names. And, I appreciate you know, it that you're thinking about it, that it's going to work, but just when we gave the approval for the permit, it was very specific, both to the location of that you would be working in and exactly what we needed you to do. Um, and you've kind of gone and done it your way. Okay, does, does anybody want to ask any other questions? All right, I um, spoke with the town attorney today about our options. Um, what I would like to suggest is that we give Larry, say, 10 days to comply with the permit as written, unless anybody wants to make any changes. And if it is not complied with by then and signed off by the road crew, um, we could um, 
if we could think about what we want to do about that. We can impose penalties. Under our ordinance, the penalty can be anything between $100,000 and $10,000. Um, we can have the road crew go in and fix the, uh, um, you know, put it back the way it was at Larry's expense. Um, there was one other thing. Maybe that was it. Oh, well, we revoke the permit, of course. So with that, would that include, would we need the crew to go and specify, as an example, what used to be a road is now just like a dirt cliff because you created kind of a new curb cut, how they're going to, because there's things that are damaged and need to be rectified that are not part of our current so okay. do they need to go under our ordinance they have to be repaired and put back to their original okay. state. Yeah. But it, was there one thing you said was better though? So, the no, it's, so it used to be a logging landing, correct, Larry? Yes. Okay. And what you did was not okay. But when it, it basically <laughs> But basically it goes straight. So now you have a straight, relatively flat road into where his house site is, where before it was going up Leonard and then down onto the thing, and this had just been like a logging landing thing. So there really wasn't anything obstructing it. You just move stuff out of the way <coughs> and just, but in doing that, basically cut the road off, cut the road in half so that the, the downward part of the original curb cut that he was supposed to be working on is now no longer there. So that being is going to have to be stabilized because it's just like a sheer chunk of dirt at the moment. Okay. When I originally approached you guys, I wanted just to put in a culvert there and, and put in some ditching and do a minimal improvement <coughs> to get to my curb cut. I mean, I just it just seems to me that why do we want to encourage more people to say, hey, look at that nice road right there. Because then they're going to continue on further up but, there. But that was a separate thing that we talked about. If it's like the road you wish to discontinue it or have an arrangement like, yeah, where she had the gate, that's something that has to come through the select board. You can't make it impassable so people don't go there. I just need to use uh, 170 feet of that um, class four road, and I can go, I have 3,000 feet along that road. Right? I don't. I can get wherever I want to off from where my bill site is. There, I, I don't have no use. I don't need to use the road. But I know that you know when the mudders or whoever's I mean, go up through there, they're gonna. They did it in the past. I know, but above the disturbed area, it doesn't look like it's got any kind of use. There's no sign that there's vehicle tracks up there. It's just a hundred feet beyond where you were um, originally approved on the Leonard Road portion, not down below where you, right? But up above there, it does not look like there's been any kind of activity. The motors have been blocked off. Well, on Gale's side, yeah. But yeah. no, but if there's, you know, if you want to look at having the road discontinued, those are steps that you would have to go through a process. You can't just as a you know be like, mm, I really don't want people up in here because it it is a road that is still. I mean, a well, this morning, I mean, I was gonna I was gonna see the road from where I disturbed from where I made the new curb cutter, so to speak, and put hay on there, and within you know a month's time or whatever, it's gonna be all natural. The ferns are all gonna be growing in there, and as long as you know, uh, it's just gonna be a, a natural. Thing. Yes, but if it's still a road, it's still a road. Yeah, you shouldn't be seeding a road. The, the problem is that there's processes for each one of these steps, and we're doing all of them out of order. And, and uh, continuing to operate like this is the reason that we have increasing regulations against this type of thing, because we're trying to protect against irregular, like, irregular and irresponsible development practices. And so if you just decided to change where your curb cut is for a dwelling that you're trying to build, then that's a change that has to come before the select board and take into all of the considerations 
that go into that relative to the public safety and public infrastructure. Even though there's a public class four road there, and even though it's getting used and damaged by mutters in an unsustainable and you know in a way that maybe negatively impacts the environment or the the space up there. Any development activity is a continuous improvement exercise. So you originally said that you were going to put a curb cut in one area. Your initial attempt to do that was uh, fell short of expectations of the town. We tried to give you very specific input on how to improve it relative to those ex expectations. And then you just sounds like you just changed where you wanted to enter the curb cut and then see the road. That's not. That's not how this process works. Yeah, so I, I guess when I first did this whole map and all that, that's that's where I've been cutting into the, yeah, I spoke with John and there was a culvert here and it just seems like I could eliminate having to have a culvert or use that and, and come in from below, take out the hill, take out the, the big maple tree that is not a factor anymore. Um, I use a hundred feet less of road that, you know, um, um, so, the, you know, I, I'm a little confused as to okay. what to do about so, that. So I, I mean, I think pragmatically, so basically, oh yeah, so when you come onto the road here, it goes up a little bit of a hill, and then it came down, and then the house site's back here. Yeah, so he and so he basically took this logging landing out and just basically is going up this way. Oh. And oh. this has been kind of like um, right. chopped off. Yes. Right. Thank you. It seems like when I got the uh, original uh, work, working, doing anything on uh, class four would we did the site board approval and all that, and then they would do a, a yeah, site visit. Um, is is that a possibility that okay, I, I, the, the the board can come and I, I don't know okay. what to do. I don't know what to do now. I mean, really. Well, like we talked about this morning, like please stop dumping <laughs> dirt from this cellar out there. Um, don't change anything more, like put seed down at the entrance to the road. I mean, are you saying you have access to your home? Yes. That's not from George Road? Like you I don't have to use, road. I mean, well, it's George Road to Leonard Road. Like you don't have to get onto your property from that? I get to, I have to get onto Leonard Road off of George Road. Okay, so you yeah. do you have to use that because you like grasped both sides. Um, I mean, I can, I'm, I'm going to see the guys in the morning. I'm going to be with you later. We could go by and I can show you. Um, it's really important not to, I mean, can you work towards the back and just not, because I think you get like a mind like, oh, I'm going to do this because this is going to go well, but it just like further exacerbates I mean, the problem. I thought I, I thought I was basically done with the road other than putting the, the topping on it and putting stone in the ditch. And okay. then, I'm not sure if uh, Jordan, if you yeah. ever email me the state specs or not, or I don't uh, know. Because no. I kind of look around. I don't... It's the... It's the... It's the... Uh, because I was going to ask about the stone and whatever the, the damn things were. The, 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 the yeah. Bridges yeah, so they were. what's happening? I, I really like, honestly right believe there that and I was it goes ready down to just put some top so dressing on, on the road the and uh, put the ditching stone and in. And then we're going to have to put in. Yeah, except now that there's now there's other material on top of the road, and so there's, there's, so there's, there's, no, is, there's, there's no point of putting uh, top dressing or top dress material on a road that it's has to switch sides with the digits. inadequate base digits. material underneath it. That's it's, 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 it kind of becomes a moot point. It's, it's part of a larger system. And I know that's more than what was there, but that was the scope of work that we were initially talking about relative to the permitting and relative to your aspirations to develop the, the parcel that you got. 
things. Right. Like yeah, I, I, I put the here. materials I added to what he was there the and has got a ditch so it does go to the, the, the drainage ditch. Um, the like I say, I've got the ten wheel dump truck was able to go up through there. Um, um, the road seems to be the road is just safe. <sighs> Rose. Yes, Rose. I just want to say that I feel really bad that you did this. It sounds to me like you are so far in over your head that you're drowning. My husband and I own a rock quarry on a county road. It took three and a half years to go through the permitting process, the engineering process, the wind blowing study, the determination to find out if there's exotic grass in Callis, and to know somebody who had to follow every length of the law, every T was crossed and every I was dotted, and to hear what you've done to Leonard Road, pardon my French, but not knowing your butt from your elbow, what gives you the right to do this? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm just sorry. I mean, I think that the select board should give you a cease and desist or whatever, and I think that you need an engineer to come in there and figure out, just to get it back to the baseline, never mind the violation of the permits, we have rules that we all need to go through, and it just it makes me feel really sad that if you were in over your head, you should have asked for help. But I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, I strongly urge the select board to issue, through your attorney, a cut off any more work, and, and, and I appreciate the knowledge and skill of our road crew, but this might be even more than they can handle as far as the proper amount of material that needs to go back on the road or something. I mean, I think this is one big, huge mess. And I, I urge the select board to issue a firm decision tonight. And I think you were mentioning that, Ian, like, don't do anything else. Pull the permit. You know, he, he did a curb cut without a permit. And then all those other things. I mean, you really have to stand up for what we have these rules for. I mean, with the Planning Commission hearing and the mowing and protecting this shoreland and everything else, you know, yeah, it's a little used class four road, but it's just the idea of the process. You know, we all have to follow the rules. And I think this was just a huge violation in so many areas. Um, and I, I strongly urge you to issue a violation, make him stop, and get an engineer in there and who would be able to determine what the next steps would be. Okay, thank you, Rose. Since you're taking public comment, I just want to comment, not having seen what Larry did, and I, I like Larry a lot, I just want to say that. Um, there's this, an aesthetic that goes along with some of these class four roads, and there's been battles for decades in this town about whether to upgrade a class four to a three. It happened on up Lightning Ridge Road there, remember that? And that involved a lot of public conversation and debate and an accord was reached and a compromise and it involved this very issue. And that road was actually upgraded, but it had a, they had to put together engineering plans and they had to ensure it was brought up to standards um, and actually the road crew stepped up in that case um, and actually built it and then build the property owner for that for that work. You might have been on the board then, Ann. I don't remember Paul that. Paul Hannon was on the board, I know. But um, Chapin Road, yeah. But, you know, the, okay. there was no input on that's my neighborhood. Uh, and I, I don't know, it sounds like it's like been improved. There was a triangle there. Is that gone, Larry? No, it's that's never been determined, that whole who owns that triangular piece. It's in, my, it's it's in the middle of the road, Larry. It was a triangle. The roads came like this. It was it's never determined. It was changed at some point and it never was right, determined. Right, right. So that's, that's uh, there's a process behind that. 
And I want to debate with you. That, okay. That's why yeah. we have a select board. I think we need to decide what we're going to do. Um, I'm a little confused by this moving the curb cut without a permit. It makes me pause as to where I thought we might go. Um, yeah, just the challenges. Of I'm not sure if I ever had an official curb cut oh. where the length was. <laughs> okay. 1998 or 2000, whatever, I got two curb cuts. There's one further up the road where I have a gate, and I had to put a culvert in that time. Okay. And there was all the water's coming over into my land from that one, and then I had the other curb cut up where I was using, uh, where I guess I'd been entering my, but I don't know if there was ever official distances and all that as far as curb cuts. Okay. So our options would be cease and desist. Um, we could uh, uh, fix it within a time certain. Never mind, we'll fix it. What do you guys think? I mean, I don't, no offense, Larry, but I don't feel comfortable asking Larry to put it back the way it was because yeah. just you're always driven by what you think is gonna work best. And I think you're really gonna struggle with like doing it, putting it back the way that it was. I mean, Rose is correct in a sense that both Tyler and John were very overwhelmed with that uh, and you know, we're trying to craft out exactly the distance and you know, what side was dug out versus the other side and that it's, it's a lot. It seems like every time we drive by, you're doing more, so. Okay, you, so you would suggest that we get either the guys go in and fix it, or mm -hmm. I, I. And if they believe that they need an engineer, as Rose suggests, I don't know. I can't evaluate that. We can yeah. talk about that. I mean, we I can guess. talk about that if they need yeah. a higher level. All right. Um, anybody else want to chime in where you are with this right now? I think work needs to stop before uh, before a site visit can be conducted with the road crew. Um, if you want to do it tomorrow uh, during all of our other extra uh, well, I mean, I'd like to take we, Jordan by so at least he could see because I pragmatically, yeah. the totally illegal court cut, but pragmatically it would lead to his home and you know, get Leonard Road back to the way that it's supposed to be and was. Um, but if it bisects the road, we have a whole other right of way issue. And it's like, so then it's like three curb cuts just to get across a class four road. So oh no, but it's, right now it's just, I can show you, but. But, but what's the purpose of doing a site visit tomorrow? Right. I was just gonna show you what it looks like. I think determining whether or not anything needs to be stabilized in, in oh. the very near term. I mean, if there's exposed earth, if the seating isn't, uh, or, or hang isn't done yeah. properly, if there are concerns with the road crew that there's going to be uh, erosion and runoff into other town right away uh, yeah. or if there's properties, stuff that, that, would need to that work would need to happen now. Almost that's immediately. what I wanted to do this morning because I was watching the weather and now it is raining out. And so. I know, but Larry, my point is that that work should have been done with foresight and before you even started moving any earth. That's the problem. And so there's already a fail, a failure of confidence in your ability to perform the work that may be necessary. And right now, uh, I'm not even sure any of us really have a full grasp of what the scope of work needs to be. And I, and I sympathize with not wanting to have to overcomplicate and engineer, uh, and over engineer a class four road, but we're, we're kind of, we're kind of at a loss here and, and needing to, at the very least, pull in more competent resources to stabilize the situation before we can even have a conversation about where the curb cut should or would or needs to be. I mean, the curb cut has to come off of the town right of way for you to access your land. You can't go off of one, one road, bisect a class four road, even if it's not fully developed, with a driveway without having going through a, a potential variance process. So, um, so you would determine uh, what needs to be stabilized, ask our guys to do it, and then what? Just 
play out the process. And then evaluate the status of an existing curb cut and and do that on the 26th. And building permit. Work on that on the 26th. Just put it all back to the 26th. Is that what you're suggesting? Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. I just want to hear from everybody, Larry, and um, or anybody who wants to tell us where they are. I I, I think that makes sense to me. I also sort of wonder if at some point it would be appropriate to have a special meeting that we all do a site visit with the road crew to gain a, oh, like a broader understanding of, of the whole situation and discuss it while we're visualizing it. Yeah, I mean, I want to see it because I'm like, I, I mean, when you first came in, just the thought that you had started working without getting a permit was foreign to me. That's not something I'm used to. That's not the way I think. So, I mean, in some way, I'm like, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised that it's, I don't know. I, I yeah, I kind of want to see it. Okay. All right. Um, what do you think about, you know, never mind, we don't need to go there. Um, so it sounds like what we're coalescing around is, Larry, you got to stop work now. Yeah, I stopped this morning. Okay. Um, and then we're going to schedule a site visit with the road crew and we will reevaluate and we'll figure out where we're going do you from. Want to, do you want to have a separate site visit? The site visit uh, I can do with and, and and maybe a member of the road crew to, uh, to kind of evaluate uh, short term triage type work. We just, yeah, depending on when you want to. Site visit the whole select board would have to be warned. Of the would have to be warned. That's yeah. right. And so, I mean, at a minimum, they're going to need to put some rocks down to keep that road going. Unless yeah, you should continue with your emergency plan. So you could do an emergency site right. visit. You wouldn't have to be warned in advance. We, right. If it's a, if you consider it an if, emergency, if it you works, actually get out there the next day or two. Right. Sorry. <laughs> and an emergency requires no warning, is that it right? It requires so, reasonable warning relative much, to the circumstances. So like if you got there to say, we're going to all be out there tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock or something, right. you could do that. Yeah. We could, we could still warn it. It could go on the website that. tonight and on front porch exactly. for tomorrow. Okay, so that's an option. Yeah. Um, and we, but we'd also have to ask the road crew if they could join us, and I don't know what their schedule the is. The road crew is going to do what the road commissioner said. Yeah, I see you right. in the morning. I can talk to you about it. So. All right. Is that what you guys would like to do? Get out there as soon as possible? Or What's do we want to? everybody's availability tomorrow? <laughs> I'm available in the afternoon or before 2 and, or before 9, I guess. It's light at 4 38. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the, this is mixing subjects, but um, the bargaining uh, committee needs, is going to meet tomorrow at 11.30, which uh, needs to also be a, uh, a, an emergency uh, meeting relative to scheduling changes. Um, so that should be warned. We're just trying to move through the process as quickly as possible, and there's summer scheduling issues with vacations. I'm going to be gone, so we have our next negotiating meeting already oh, scheduled, and so we want to make sure that we have everything prepared. So that's happening at 11.30 here. Well, um, how do you feel about tomorrow afternoon? So or? there's another engagement for Ann and I at, at 1, <laughs> uh, but we could do it immediately following that, it's the whole day of select boarding. It is, yeah. Um, or, or today. Or before. I mean, if the union meeting is at 11.30, we could do the site visit at 10. I, I couldn't, but that's okay. If, if mm -hmm. other people want to continue with this, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't need to be there. I'm just can take a video for me. Let me see it. I've got pictures. Um, or, I mean, after spine two, your next meeting is at one? Yeah. And how long do you think that will be? Is like it an hour okay. at most? 
So and Gabrielle, when did you say you'd be free? I mean, I could do it at two, you know, one or two, or even one. I, I think I, I, I may need to use the morning for getting things right. to work. Okay. My day job. Site visit, two o'clock. I would hate to do so that to you, but. Let's call it two. Two thirty. So there's going to be a, a return to town hall. Um, Following the one. Oh, well, that's how we could and do so it. So we yeah. could rendezvous here at two thirty and here. Uh, yeah. Wait. So site visit at two. No, site visit oh. first, right? No. So we have yeah. other people involved in the one o'clock thing that we're going together to go and do a thing, and then yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're just doing logistics. For I'm just doing logistics. Site, yeah. So uh, for multiple site visits. So we, we would all meet here at 2.30 and caravan over. I think so. Yes. Okay. Would you like to meet afterwards to discuss it? Which I think we could do under the emergency. That would be appropriate. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's, one, it's one meeting, so right. yeah. we're already convening. So we could continue the conversation. Continue this afterwards. discussion then. Yeah. Okay, so, so then we'll come back to the town hall. Site visit and any continued discussion. Followed at the town hall. Uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Phew. Um, you got all that, Jamie, because you're going to put it on the website tonight? Yes. Okay. Larry, I'm sorry. I know this no, is no, not I'm fun. I'm sorry, too. I just, I thought I was doing good. You're all good. Yeah. Um, I wasn't trying to call it. I mean, I've been accessing the land for 30 years, and I just needed to be able to get a dump truck and a cement truck. I know, but that's the point, Larry. The access, the nature of the access changes as soon as you start developing the land, and that's why there's regulations, and that's why there's a process governing the development process. Okay. Uh, we, we have a plan. Can we move on? Because I, we still have one or two other quick things. Do we have a curb cut, unsigned curb cut to sign? Barbara. Yeah, it's for that. Ah. It's the Memorial, Memorial Hall. House Memorial Hall is right there in one of our developers. Okay, you all got that. Yeah. For some reason, it never got signed. Um, and it's done, and it's just back. So this is a curb cut that no, was the previously like order for oh. back in 2020. No, oh, my God. Um, Sorry, Barbara, what? This is a curb cut for North House Memorial Hall that the previous select board approved back in 2020. Oh, yeah. And so, and they've done the work, they met the specifications and so forth. It just, it's just that the permit was never signed. Yeah. Right. And we need the select board to sign it. So, so we'll take a motion to sign the curb cut for Memorial Hall on um, November 1st, 2020, uh, as written, I guess. Okay. So moved. Okay. Thanks for coming Thank and sitting with us. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, road sign inventory. Shall we defer that one? That can wait. Okay. Um, what should we Oh, the road, the road sign, sign inventory. Road sign inventory. Yeah. Right. Emergency management team meeting. We did. Do we need to talk about Curtis Dan? Curtis, yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds or less. Uh, it'll be quick. I told my family I was going to be midnight. So far. <laughs> so we're early. <laughs> um, I spoke today with Thomas Maloney. Um, he can. He, agrees that the bond vote was okay as was and would not, there's no question okay. there. However, there's a, a process in which we make a motion as a select board to certify the um, election results. Um, and oh. so he emailed me about an hour before this meeting um, a document that was a draft motion um, that's two pages long that is all the legalese of us as a select board 
um, finding that the vote was appropriate and the bond can move forward. Um, he said it's not super time sensitive, so it's okay, I think, to move the vote to the next meeting, but we okay. wanted you to be aware that okay. that was an That's action. That's different we had from to the take. one that you and Tegan filled out to certify that yes. we've done it. Okay. Yes. Um, and part I part of the reason this needs to happen is there's there's question in the warning of the bond vote. Front Porch Forum was used as one of the publication sources. Mm -hmm. And there's questions about that that go way beyond our town, where different attorneys have different opinions on the validity. Um, okay. And so. And there hasn't been a ruling? But it was also properly worn in newspapers or public. It, it was, yes. Twice. And so this two that's, page. That's the, the law. Yeah, so this two page motion that Thomas suggested, which I put in today's <coughs> meeting Google file just about an hour ago, if anyone wants to look at it, um, goes through exactly all the steps that were taken and explains why that it was an adequate process. So if we sign it, um, I'm just thinking what to put on the next agenda for a possible action. Would it be vote to certify the bond vote? Is that the word I um, thought I heard you use? I don't understand. If we did more than the requirement, why do we have to certify the bond vote? I think we have to certify one way or the other. It's a procedural thing. Right. Um, so there has been, there is some question on whether or not it is certifiable, which <laughs> arguably we all are. <laughs> uh, but. It seems like council's recommendation is that we make a motion that provides our rationale while we certify the vote, and that kind of clears the air, so to speak. Um, right. So he. I think it's important that you guys know that I don't know what you guys do for procedure. The select board did not rely on front porch form as a formal public notice venue. It was an, a courtesy, if you will. Because we knew the town's folks reviewed that regularly. But in terms of official notice, that was never relied upon. <coughs> so you should know that in certifying this. Yeah, so what he said in the email, which I think went to you as well, Ann, that uh -huh. he said, I reviewed the clerk's certificate for the annual town meeting. There is a question with respect to the posting of the warning, and in particular, whether Front Porch Forum is a proper location for posting notice. There is a Vermont statute that allows the select board to validate the vote at the annual meeting. Validate, okay. That I recommend the select board take such action okay. to address any questions that may remain. How, how could they have done that at the annual meeting when the annual meeting was held before the polls closed? Yeah, so we were the ones that should have done it because then they weren't the select board after that. Right. right. And, and, yeah. right. The, and the polls hadn't closed yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you, you, it goes to intent also. If you, yeah. The previous select board used that as the, the, the mechanism for providing right. a legal warning. It did not. Right. You know, and the resolution includes a notice of official intent. And he told us how to do it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we um, didn't know we were supposed to do that, so I'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. Okay. Anything on shared documents and emails? No. no. Good. Collective oh, Other than um, we have a, uh, a new email for uh, Cole, so he is going to be oh. uh, constable uh, at Callis. Uh, that's active. I need a new password to give to Cole, uh, which I'll try to get to him in the next day or so. There is also an animal control at Callis, which is not a separate account, but a alias so people can email it and it'll go to the <coughs> same inbox. Um, uh -huh. And I'll work with Cole on organizing that in a way that is intuitive for Cole. But at the moment, those are two accounts that are to each other. Are you guys going to post your phone numbers so people can reach you? No way. 
I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I didn't see it. Okay. Select board. There is a select board email okay. that comes to all of us. No, no, no. Phone um, numbers. No. Select board members are no. supposed to be available. What? Actually, if you look at a lot of select board sites, they do not post Okay, so you're not going to. If they want to get us by phone, they can call Barbara. <laughs> and she'll ask us all about her. I believe that Anne's and mine are posted as road commissioners. Yeah. On the road commissioner page. Okay, collective bargaining team. Anything to report? I don't know. What did you say? Collective bargaining. Oh, okay. Uh, Just what we are. Well, not only that we need to make an, an emergency rescheduling for the uh, for the committee meeting that's going to convene okay. tomorrow at eleven thirty. So we're mentioning that now as kind of an advance warning that's going to be coming through. We're not trying to sneak anything through. It's just that it's been tough trying to keep everything on schedule and trying to move through the process as quick as possible. Um, and we have to re reschedule. May I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> addressing the collective bargaining team. <clears throat> Wendy Wilton, who with Newark, who's running payroll, has been trying to find, figure out if the previous select board approved a COLA increase for staff for staff for start effective the July 1, which is the beginning of the new fiscal year. That's when it typically takes effect. And we can't find any, note, any uh, information about a COLA increase. And the question is, was it maybe, maybe not done because of contract negotiations? So if you guys could add to your collective bargaining uh, agenda to talk about what, if the town can do a color increase across the board for employees for fiscal year 2024 or not, or, or you have to wait to the end of your negotiations and then make it retroactive to July 1st. That's a tough one to answer because it's part of the negotiating process. And, and I'm not expecting you to answer yeah. tonight. I'm asking you to add it to your agenda of what you're discussing in collective bargaining. It, yeah, it's already been it's already been kind of included yeah. in the conversation yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, the the intention would would be to keep everything as equitable as possible. We just need to it's kind of a chicken or the egg conversation. Um, so we'll, add it. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it top of mind. Okay. Shed v. Town of Dallas. What do we got? Nothing. Uh, yeah, we're, uh -huh. we're just kind of in a holding pattern at, uh, at the m moment. So uh, I just wanted to make a comment. We just want to be careful about you know, how we kind of represent things on the agenda. Right now, the town isn't planning on taking any specific action at the moment. We're uh, we are going to be uh, conducting a, uh, a site visit relative to uh, uh, the remedial actions, but um, the legal matters have kind of shifted uh, a little bit and we're just in a holding pattern right now uh, while we kind of wait for that to resolve okay. or find some resolution or work towards resolution or do something to that extent. Um, so, uh, Joe brought it up today. Let me think about whether I can say this in public. Um, yeah, he wanted us to think about if there was a deal we might accept. That's an executive session conversation. That's definitely executive session. Yeah. Um, oh, we don't want to go to executive session now, do we? No, there's, I, I, there's nothing to do at, to uh, at the moment other yeah. than uh, uh, conduct the site visit and to continue to work with the lawyers to work through a dialogue. Um, as we're doing that in the coming weeks, we need to have a group discussion about a path forward. But all of that is somewhat informed by, uh, by the current legal status. Okay, I think we're done. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved.
Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That was.